I'd like to go ahead and introduce our first presenter, uh, Ulupa Juhai Lansa. And let's see. So Ulupa's father is from Kahuku. Uh, his mother is from Makaha. And they settled in Honokai Hale at a time when they were the only household at the end of an unpaved road surrounded by Kiave Forest. He was born and raised here along with three brothers and two sisters. And as of today, the corner pocket, his family house in Honokai Hale, and the surrounding countryside have raised four generations. Uh, further down the coast, at the opposite end, is Makaha Valley, the home of his great grandparents and Ohana. Uh, this is where they would get together for holidays and other special events throughout the year, each and every year. And Ulupo's heart and spirit is warm by thoughts and recollections of growing up on the Wai'anae coast. And he is rooted here, considers the sands from Ka'ena to Kalailoa to be his home sweet home. Uh, Ulupo is currently pursuing a master's degree in Pacific Island Studies at UH Manoa's Center for Pacific Island Studies. And he's going to be presenting his research about indigenous archaeology, indigenous anthropology, why should we use Western ways along with traditional means to care for our cultural heritage. So without further ado, uh, please let me welcome Ulupo. Malu here, Kahalik Mala, Huna Nina, Neku, Homi Makahono, Kaimalinoe, Erleila Himaika Hanu Pakai, Parmailaki Alaika, who Kai, Alau Nana Valino, no Puko. Kua e he hi a vewa i ke kula o ka pua ko. Me he i lima kukula, ai a kuki a veno ho mali e, e iki mai. E iki mai nga pua makamaela e. He makana la aloa kei a mai kalani mai. He mai, he mai. Aloha e. Aloha. Aloha. Thank you for the introduction, Niki. Uh, yes, um, no maka ko mama or tita konai noa, no kahuku uh, ko papa or Frederick konai noa. Um, and no honokai hale mai ko ohana. Uh, elua, elua u kaiko ana, uh, ho okahi kaiko hine hanau mua, ho okai kaiko hine um, hanau hope, and ho okai kai kaina uh, oya kam, kamuli loa, and uh, owa wa ulukoa. And um, he keki kane ka uno hoi o Ezra um, kua kua no no ho malu hia halu ugi na puko na ino asa. Aloha kako. So um, I was uh, asked to um, talk a little bit about my studies and my work. And um, currently, as Mickey said, I'm going for my master's degree, but uh, I'd like to backtrack a little bit and talk about my. Um, my bachelor's and my, uh, my, I had a double bachelor's in, in anthropology and ethnic studies. And um, because of that, right now I'm working as an archaeologist. Um, hopefully, uh, after I introduce you to uh, what, what I do, hopefully I can convince some of you to, to join this career field because there's a lot of work that we need to do. It's a lot of work, you know. Uh, uh, so before I begin, let, let me uh, give you some historical context. Uh, anthropology and archaeology. Uh, there's a reason I got into this, into this field. Anth archaeology is a part of anthropology. So for some schools, you can get an archaeology degree. And for others, you get the anthropology degree. And using that, you can become an archaeologist. Yeah, I saw a lot of... Uh, laws and regulations being being made uh, by people because they had the degree, the archaeology degree, and mm -hmm. I was like, wow, look at all our, all our kupuna. They're so knowledgeable, but they don't have degrees, so they just get consulted, right? And then, to what extent are our kupuna um, really listened to when they finally make the make the uh, final regulation and laws? So I say, you know. Um, Maybe I should become an archaeologist, and then I can help what I can and do what I can to make sure that the regulations and laws uh, are, are favorable to what they should be. 
So that's how I got into this. But but traditionally, a lot of people, they, they don't like uh, the field of anthropology, archaeology, because it started in Europe, yeah? And it started in America, first of all, in Europe. Basically, anthropology, scientists were leaving Europe and going to the Pacific, going to uh, the Americas, going to Africa, and uh, studying all of these people who are not European. And they come back and they write books and say, oh, this is... This is, this is these people, they live here on this island, they live in this jungle, they live in this desert, and this is how they live, this is what they do, and uh, this is what, how they speak, and writing all their books, and they go back to Europe, and they, or in America later, yeah? They go back, and they write these books, and they put it on their library shelves, and it stays there, yeah? What good does that do for us, yeah? Um, and then, um, Further down the line, you have uh, the subfield of archaeology. Uh, again, um, it's a Western concept where scientists, again, come in from the West, um, Europe and America, and they, they study uh, past, uh, our past, yeah? the material remains of what we have. And then they, uh, they write books about that. And not only that, um, if they stay within the community, you know, the way it happens is they're the ones, as I said earlier, they start writing the rules and regulations of how we're going to take care of it. I mean, intentions might be good, maybe, not always, you know, but maybe the intentions are good. But even if the intentions are good, a lot of times the rules and regulations that are made, they just, they don't match, yeah, you know. How come, you know, we're being prohibited from this side? Why, you know, why is that one allowed to be destroyed? And, you know, so like, hey, we need more archaeologists, no? Yeah. Right? And we need more anthropologists so that we can have our books on the bookshelf with our voice so that at least whether or not the other books are correct, at least you know our voice is there. Yeah. So why should we use Western ways along with traditional means? Well... Traditional means is always good, yeah? There's a lot of traditional ways that we care for our heritage, right? Hula is one, yeah? Um, we don't need a degree. We don't need a degree to re rebuild the uh, local ia, right? The fish ponds. We don't need a degree to, to um, restore the lohikalo. Right? We don't need an archaeology or anthropology degree to um, study navigation and all that and, and to do hula, you know? The point is that as a community, since time began, we've been caring for our own culture, our own heritage, our own customs, the way that we see fit, and it's, it's perfectly fine. Yeah, it works. But when you have people uh, coming in with their degrees and adding in their point of view, um, maybe that's, that's when we should ask ourselves, well, you know what? I think maybe we, we should send some people to get their degrees too so that we make sure that the right story is being told. Yeah. So it's important at the start of this that uh, I want to emphasize, you know, we always, always stick to our traditional means. We always keep that. But in addition, we build, upon, we build on top of that with all these uh, Western, Western uh, academic means. And uh, we move forward and we put all of that together. Yeah? Yeah. <coughs> this is my halal, by the way. <laughs> it is better for us to tell our story ourselves. This is, we're doing a, a hula about uh, uh, Maui when he uh, captured the sun, no? Right over here, right? <laughs> Better we do them like this than read the book, right? In the library, right? So, okay. I want to start with, by defining some terms so we know what is anthropology. Here's a picture of the Bishop Museum, straight from Merriam-Webster Webster Dictionary. Um, 
Anthropology is a study of human beings and their ancestors through time and space in relation to physical character, environmental, social relations, culture. Basically, it's a study of people. Like I said, it was the age of discovery and people were leaving Europe and America and they, they made a whole field about, you know, this kind of studies, just studying people, right? So that's what anthropology is. When you get your degree in anthropology, that's basically the definition. And there are four subfields. I mentioned one. One is archaeology. We have physical anthropology, cultural, archaeology, and we have ling linguistic anthropology. Those are the four main fields from, a, from an anthropology degree. Okay? From that, you get all these little uh, specialties. Egyptology. Oh, you're just going to study Egypt and you know the pyramids or Pacific, Ar Pacific Islands archaeology. Um, <coughs> All kind of you know linguistics, you know. Um, sometimes uh, language, yeah, like you know ebonics. They say how how the um, um, black people talk in the inner cities, how it evolved to a land. You know, there's all different things. Uh, paleontology, yeah, the fossils of dinosaur. When I tell people I'm an archaeologist, first thing they say, oh, you study dinosaurs. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. But um, so those are the four subfields, and um. I'm going to give some examples of each one. Yeah? So physical anthropology, um, concerned with the comparative study of human evolution, variation, classification, especially through measurement of observation. So these are the people that, whether you um, subscribe to that view or not, yeah, they're, they're kind of saying, oh, you know, I think we came from cavemen, Cro-Magnon, Neanderthal, and you know, the eight, this is in Uganda. And this is it's good, yeah, Facebook, because I didn't have to like keep getting all my sources. I said, oh, I get a picture there, yeah. And um, yeah, so here's my, I had fun making my uh, PowerPoint, because I, I never make a PowerPoint in ages. You can do all kind of things nowadays, yeah. Um, so that's physical anthropology, studying the bones and all that, yeah. And then you have archaeology, scientific study of material remains. Fossil relics, artifacts, monuments, um, past human life and activities. Anything from the past. Whether or not, um, whether or not the people are here today or, or it's a, a culture that doesn't exist. Yeah, on the Adriatic coast, the Dal um, Dalmatia. It's called Dalmatia. Yeah? That language doesn't exist anymore. But whatever is left behind, um, that's what archaeologists study. So... I work in that capacity, taking care of cultural sites on army lands, doing my best to make sure that the army takes care of the sites we have there. I need help. No, 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 I'm joking, I'm joking. We got a good crew, we got a good crew, but I mean, it would be nice, you know, to have more archeologists, you know, you know, to um, help, yeah. So, here we go, here's an example. You're an archeologist, you come up to this, this is remains from long time ago. What is that? You don't have to answer, but I want you to think in your mind. What is that? You know? So you're going to write your little book and you're going to go back to Europe and you're going to say, this is what I saw and it measured, you know, you got out your tape measure, it measured this much and, you know, and so this is what it is and the culture there is this and that. What's the chances you're going to get it right if you're not from that culture, right? That's what people was doing here, no? Right? Come over here, they look, and they talk to a couple people here and there, and all of a sudden they write in the books, right? This is actually the foundation of a house for the Chamorro people. Yeah, you see them down there in the island of Guam and so forth. I'm, I'm studying this for my masters, but uh, so the point is, yeah, archaeology, which is why we need archaeologists here, yeah, so that we can make sure the story is correct. It's 2014. And you still get people um, <coughs> writing erroneously. Uh, to this day, I see it, you know. Sites that we have, you know, and you see, you see archaeologists come and say, oh, we don't need to save that because that's just fill in the blank, right? So that's why. Uh, here's another example I'm going to use uh, uh, for cultural anthropology. Branch of anthropology deals with study of culture. I like this one. 
Yeah, I like this one. Ethnography, folklore, linguistics, you know, you put it all together and then you explain, you explain your culture, right? And for my example, I take you to Romania, Transylvania. This is the genealogy of Vlad. Vlad is known as Dracula, yeah? I went there because I wanted to see Dracula's castle. <laughs> so I went. And um, funny thing is on the way down, my Romanian tour guide, he said, you know, Vlad, Vlad was a prince. He said, Vlad is a hero to us because he would put the enemies, you know, he'd put their enemies on display. They're dead already. He put them on display. He said, at that time, the country of Turkey was a huge empire, and they were just conquering all these lands. And the Turks were actually sitting across and looking at Vlad's castle, and they were too scared to uh, invade, right? And so he said, so for us, he's our hero because he um, helped keep the Turks away. Um, and so can you imagine that perspective, that point of view, writing your history as a cultural anthropologist? I'm Romanian. This is who Vlad is, as opposed to, <laughs> right? Yeah. So the point is that we're going to have, we're going to always have wrong stories out there or stories that want to emphasize this or it goes off on its own. So it's always good to have our own voices. Yeah. Finally, in the linguistic anthropology, interdisciplinary study of the role of languages in the social lives of our community. I'm going to talk about pigeon. <laughs> See that shaka, yeah? yeah? You go any place in the road, you go like that, you go, oh, Hawaii, you know? But yet, it's not native Hawaiian, it's not Japanese, Chinese, <laughs> Korean, Filipino, Puerto Rican, it's, <laughs> but it's not American. It's local, right? The same way pigeon is, right? So we all know that people are going to say pigeon is, you know, incorrect English, you just don't know how to talk. But actually, it is an accepted language now because once it becomes passed down to the next generation and we have rules, how to say in the past tense, the present tense, the future tense, which we do, once it becomes to that level, it's no longer a broken language. It's a, it's the correct language. So by the time it came to me, it already was in my family for several generations. Pigeon, <coughs> right? And um, who remembers that guy? This is Mr. Okara, taste testing soda A or soda X. Rap rap linger, yeah? Speaking pigeon, right? Pigeon is for all of us, right? It's but again what role does that have historically in our community? Um, if you want that story to be told correctly, it's going to be us. You cannot expect somebody to come from California and tell you all about Pigeon and where it came from. And what is the one thing when we see um, Hawaii Five O or whatever TV show or movie and they're talking Pigeon? Oh, yeah, that doesn't sound right, you know? We know, right? Because we know, yeah. So that's the funny thing, you know? We never did, we never had correctly taught in school, this is how you correctly speak pigeon in the past tense. And the, but we know, right? So we're the ones who are supposed to talk about what role it plays in the history of it. So those are the four, uh, oh, there's my animation. <laughs> so so there, there, those are my four, uh, the four subfields of anthropology, okay? This is my professor, Tai Kavika Tengan, yeah? Kumu Tengan, Kumu Kavika. He teaches this subject in, um, in UH Manoa, Indigenous Anthropology. So everything I just told you about anthropology, archaeology, cultural anthropology, physical, um, linguistic anthropology, Everything I tell you about learning culture and all that, it's about indigenous native people's point of view. And he asks in his, in his class at Manoa, what do indigenous perspectives and politics bring to anthropology? When we enter the field of anthropology, 
as opposed to somebody from Europe or America, what do we offer it? And on the other side, what can anthropology, studying this field, what can it offer us? I kind of showed some examples of how you can correct the wrong picture. <coughs> but I'm going to take it here. Pu'ukapole. Okay. So you all know where the archery range is. Yeah, Pu'ukapole, Chile. Yeah, Chile's uh, Kapole. Okay. This is the Pu'u. Yeah. There's a lot of traditional significance there. Um, Kamapua'a lived there, right? His grandmother, his grandmother, he, um, everybody brought tribute to his grandmother there, Kamaunua Niho. She had her house there. Um, and the foundation of her house was what could be seen there like as maybe a little over 100 years ago. It was still there. And then they, when they made the road, they crushed a lot of that. Yeah. Um, that pu'u, this pu'u is also known for um, marking of the seasons, from the dry season to the wet season. And, Journey of the sun and lining it up with pu'u palailai and so forth. <clears throat> and you know when the sun come down and there's a lay, nice glow of kapo, kapo lay, <laughs> beautiful, yeah. And then also it's it was uh, it was um, um, John Papa Ii mentions that it was uh, a marker. It was a marker on the landscape to let us know how to, uh, as if you're coming up from um, Waipahu, Hawaii area, you notice there's a little, uh, it's an incline. So as you're coming up, you can imagine you're, you're walking, right? In the ancient days, you're walking, and you're going up, and then when you see pu'u, kapule, like, okay, head, head to that pu'u, and then once you hit, hit there, and then you get your up and downs near Honokai Hale, and you come around the corner. And that was the only coastal route to this side, right? The, the two others were through uh, Mauka, right? Pohakea and um, Kole Kole, no? Okay. So, this is a traditional significance. And as an archaeologist, right now, actually, there's a, a little bit of trouble, some pilikia here right now, because they want to save it. And as an archaeologist, this is what we want to say. But there are some people that say, no. This is important because we had this battery here and this command post and all these bunkers. Yeah? Whose voice is going to get heard? I hope they hire my company. Or I hope somebody asks me, can you help write this report? Because otherwise, I don't know who's going to write the report. But if this is what they're going to focus on, then, you know, the traditional significance might be shoved behind. So that's a good example of why, hey, you might want to think about you know, encouraging people to get in this field. Um, I wanted to briefly show you this process right here. Determine if it's, it's historically important. Yeah, you do an inventory. Yes, if there's no sites, okay, good. Build what you want to build. If there are sites, well, we got to determine how significant is it. So at, at each of these stages, it's important we have a voice, right? And I like to emphasize again, oh, we have, you know, all our kupuna, right? Everybody knows that what is, it, you know, if you're from Nana Kuli, well, you know, that is important there, or why am I depends where you're at, you know, but how often are they listened to if they don't have the paper, yeah? Until we change that. We need more people to get that degree so we can say, wait, hold on. I got this degree and uncle says this. That's all I need to know. Uncle doesn't need to have a degree. I know that he knows. Or well, auntie says so. Yeah. Um, but I wanted to show you that. Um, and then I wanted to mention that this is, this topic of indigenous anthropology is global. Yeah. I went to the United Nations uh, Permanent Forum on Indigenous Issues. And we had indigenous peoples from all over the world, from the Arctic, from Africa, from Asia, from North and South America, uh, from Australia. And everybody um, is moving forward. 
trying to put our own voice back into the picture. <clears throat> this, this Maori scholar, her name is Linda Tuhivai Smith. This is basically what she said. Implications for indigenous research seem to be clear and straightforward. Basically, what she's saying is that by native peoples doing the research ourselves, yeah, it's no longer studying somebody else and writing a book and putting it in your records or in the library. By native peoples doing this ourselves, we're talking about our own survival of our own culture and language the way we see fit, the way we want it told. So it's all about culture survival, healing, restoration, and making right whatever wrong has been done in the past. Indigenous research, anthropology, falls under that. Um, the path, I'm almost Paul. I know some people have to leave. <laughs> the path right here, the path uh, for me, uh, again, is um, an anthropology degree. Um, I, I took ethnic studies also, and ethnic studies is more of uh, um, how to actively make change. How have, how have other minorities made change for the better? So you put all of that together, uh, it, it's, it's really good. And, and you don't have to just do anthropology. Yeah? Um, do anthropology and do Hawaiian studies. Do anthropology and uh, law. Or, you know, it, there's uh, so many combinations that you can do. Yeah? But it's important that we have our voice in. So the path is that, um, and then after you get that uh, degree, you're going to also want to do a field school. You do a field school, uh, especially for archaeology. Before they hire you, they want to know that you, you spent a summer under the instruction of uh, a current archaeologist, and they told you that, okay, this is how you document. This is, you know, the things that you do. Yeah? Internship, right? Yeah, like an internship, yeah. And a lot of times, these schools, we have study abroad. So, you know, we all qualify for that. Like, oh, study abroad, okay, you know, do that for the summer, you know. Sometimes study abroad on Kauai, you know, and they just send you over there and you work over there. Um, on uh, Nu'alolo is on the, you know, the west, northwest side over there. Um, my um, uh, study abroad was in Guam. So, they, you know, that's where I documented those, uh, the village that was, uh, it was uh, abandoned after the Spanish Terminal Wars in the 1600s. Nobody was there, so it's good to... Um, Connect. I connected the families of that land, which is now Fish and Wildlife uh, Federal Lands. I connected them back and I brought them back to their home, their home village. It was full. It was powerful. Yeah. But um, and then um, and then right now, I would also encourage. I'm, I'm in the masses uh, the degree program with uh, Sarah back there uh, in Pacific Island Studies. You know, and what it is is uh, we have everyone doing. Whatever you graduated with in, in bachelor's, whether it's Hawaiian studies or law or education or social work, we all come together for our graduate research uh, regionally as a Pacific. And when we come together, oh, our voice is real strong, yeah? Because everybody has a similar uh, history, similar tragedies, and so it's all going to be a similar way to triumph and get everything good again. Um, so. This is Koho Olave, Moa Ula Iki, yeah. And um, mahalo to everyone. And uh, if anyone has any questions, uh, there's my final animation. <laughs> I, I dig making PowerPoints now. Wow. Uh, well, it's my son. Yeah. Is, is this one? Oh, thank you. Sure. How many years have you been doing your studies so far? My studies, <clears throat> you like the good answer or you like the real answer? <laughs> okay, so I was kind of Kolohe growing up, yeah? So um, um, at 17, I joined the army so that my dad would like, 
my dad was old school. Eh? I got, you know, I was getting in trouble. And when these guys would call me up and they said, uh, is this Dietrich? I said, yeah, who's this? He said, oh, this is the army. I was like, he said, oh, we, we can, you know, offer you all these things. And I was like, oh, this guy must care. He know my name. You know? It's like, wow, he know my name. So I was like, oh, okay. And then so I joined. I was 17. And um, I told my, my mom and dad, you know, I told my dad, especially, I said, okay, dad, if I joined. So I was like, Phew, you know, okay. That was kind of redemption, though. And then, um, but fast forward, when I came back, they were giving me um, money to go to school. So I said, oh, how much money do you give me if I go to school? They said, the more classes you take, the more money we give you. I said, oh, sign me up. <laughs> <laughs> and honest to goodness, I would make one barbecue at Tracks Beach once a month. Because, and that money, I was like, oh, this is, this is free money, right? So I was like, so I would sign up for school. And I call everybody from Honokai Hale because everybody's struggling. Yeah, I said, hey, I get this free money. No worry, just come. I, you know, I buy everything. And, oh, it's good fun, you know. But I wasn't passing anti. Oh. And th then I found out later on that I owe them money. Yeah. I said, hey, you never told me. I, got, I thought that was my money. They said, no, no, you don't pass. You owe us back. Oh, so... Um, Long story short, I ended up in school a little bit longer. It took me a while to get back into school. <laughs> but um, when I did get back into school, I was on a roll. I graduated with honors. I, you know, I, I fly in colors, you know. <laughs> you remember the debt you owed, yeah? <laughs> I paid that off. I'm like, whoo! <laughs> but, um, yeah, and then, um, so I, I'm, I'm pretty good on that. However, um, because I'm working full-time, I work 40 hours a week. I can only go one class, um, one class a week. I, I work 10 hours, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, Thursday, Friday, and every Wednesday I, I, I'm off and I can go to school. And then with, plus with my halal, it's like I really, so right as of now, I'm going to be in school a little bit longer than people who can go full time, yeah? But, um, well, that's, that's the way it goes. Everything has a reason, yeah? Yeah. 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 I know you mentioned um, the, the blending of the Western and the traditional, and I was just wondering uh, what you've worked on with those two things um, that you feel that you've had success in as far as um, the, the, the traditional <coughs> things that you've been, that can be perpetuated, is there anything that you've worked on where those two things have been together has been successful? Um, you know, that's a, that's a good, you know, that's a good question. Um, the, I think first and foremost, first and foremost, for people who go to school, they should never forget or lose sight of how important our traditional ways are, you know. And because that's, that's your foundation, what you learn from the family and from your community and, or your kumu or whatever, you know, that, that's always, that's all, you cannot ever discard that because, oh, now I'm in, I'm in college, you know. So first, I've always, uh, I've always kept that in mind. I've never said, oh, because now I'm, I'm with this degree. That, and I've, I've, in my capacity as an archaeologist, I've had people say, these are the guidelines from the federal government. We can take care, we can preserve this site if it's A, um, if it's linked to a specific famous person. B, if it's, you know, you have like A, B, C, and D, yeah? But some of, some of the criteria, they don't match. So that's when the non-Western side says for me, like, you know, the list is wrong. You know, uh, we need to listen to Uncle over here who's saying that, you know, that's important. So I, I've, had to, I've had to talk to uh, some people, you know, some of, my, some of the senior, senior people in my job field and said that, you know, um, this Western way of deciding what to save, 
and how to save it is like it's not right yeah you know and um for example yeah they're talking about let's say uh, a wall we have a nice wall maybe three feet high perfect wall maybe it comes from uh maybe it comes i'm just throwing this out there i don't want to say this specifically happened yet but let's say this wall came from the ranching period oh nice wall and then we have one pohaku um for some reason one machine would kind of break up one end but what if it's a uh, some place where you know where we put the pico or something you know so you have everybody saying that wow look at this wow we should invest all our money because according to this if it's you know still in good condition and it comes with you can connect it to uh, Dillingham Ranch or you know whoever it is and then but on the non-western side we say you know what I don't care if that wall is 100 feet that pohaku is way more important you know um, so it's always just being aware of that and then also um, I go to church too yeah so like you know that in itself is in some ways you know doesn't jive with science so always to always be guided by you know by the spirit Yes, be guided. Yeah, be guided. Yeah, you cannot just be guided by the books. Yeah, so, so you you know we all weave the traditional and the and the Western. And I'm sure if I think of more ways, there's there's times I've done. And I've done it too with my halal, definitely with my halal. Yeah. Hello. Um, I know you're a busy man, but. Um, I belong with the Hawaii Civic Club for Alulu Ule and Des Wainai over here represented. And your expertise seems to be valuable that how can we utilize the services of your company? Because right now we're in the process of putting together a resolution to <coughs> reclaim the fish pond up at Ka'ala. So this project is a mobile <coughs> development from Makaha, Wainai, Alulu Ule, Nani Kapono, and to the Kapole. They belong to the same moku. So we just have a rough draft out in our these circles, but we would appreciate for how much does it cost? <laughs> because we're kind of full, yeah. <laughs> but if I could have a card, so yes. at the end of this, if we could, yes, I'll I'll, I'll leave I'll, I'll have my cards out here, yeah. Um, awesome, awesome work. It's good to do. Is uh, is that five minutes? Oh, <laughs> okay. Let's not do. It. Oh yeah yeah yeah. There's the information here. Yes. Mahalo. Um, I'll leave my card. You know, um, I don't have, I don't own the company, but uh, my boss is known for, uh, I, I work part-time. In addition to my full-time job, I work for part-time, um, I work part-time for an archaeological firm. It's called Keala Pono. Keala Pono. Keala Pono. Yeah. And so my boss, uh, Wendy, you know, um, it would be up to her to uh, take up the job, but she's known for her integrity. We all know you know, decades ago, as long as you, you have the money, you know, you pay, you know, people developing here, they bring in a company from the mainland and they, you know, pay them off and they're going to say, okay, no more nothing here, you can build, yeah. So, um, my, you know, my boss is known for her integrity and, um, and otherwise, I mean, I, I'll, I'll help in any which way I can, you know, uh, as long as um, it's on my off time. <laughs> I'll try. I'll try. I'll, I'll try. I'm, I'm, I'm for it. Hey, you know, we all got to move forward. And yeah, I love this side. Yeah. I got a concern about um, the Mokoe Islands. Um, right now, there's five families living there. And their lease is going to run out in the next 15 or 25 years around there. Because the state gave them so many years in the lease, yeah, back in 1975. But what had happened, they only gave 14 families that came up. But within the 14 families, they just took it for themselves and not the rest of their Ohana. Because I know back in the 50s and 60s, the whole island was populated. But I know the uh, military went in and did some archaeological studies. And um, they bombed the center of, what was the center of the island? Mokoe. To, uh, yeah, to put in this uh, water thing 
to click that there was a fish pond there, which was not there in the 50s and the 60s. So, um, but however, they didn't complete the studies. And then there was this big grant, and this lady that uh, tried to help the islanders so per se, she got the grant money, but she didn't complete the job. So in other words, she took the grant money and left. So what we're starting to look at is how to help the islanders get back more of what is due to them. Yeah, I, I've been to Mokawe. I paddled out there and I met Auntie Joni. Oh, what? Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, well, I, I don't know. I mean, but um, I, you know, it's, I mean, I, I, hope, I hope for the best for them. You know, I hope, I can, for my, personally, for my capacity, I can only help if somebody asks me to, to help, you know, and I, I hope everything works out. I'm, it's sad to hear if that happens, you know, in the past too, yeah? like, money being just paid out just to get the stamp, you know, but, you know, now it's 2014, we, we make things better and move forward, yeah, but I hope so. But, you know, that's one family that claimed to have been there back in the 50s, oh. when we know, well, I know, we they were not. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, you know, that can be a big fight, yeah. which I know, you know. Yeah. And wow. You know, you didn't come out to the 70s, hello. I was growing up there back in the late 50s, oh. so I know you were not there. Oh. So I can trash on you, you know. My dad grew up in Damon Track, you know, maybe you know. Yeah. <laughs> Damon Track, my dad. <laughs> Duhe Lansad. Oh, you did? That's a nice Hawaii name. That's a nice yeah, it had uh, C Road. C Road and uh, L Road, I think, or something. I'm going to do that. <laughs> Is this something comprehensive for promoting higher education? I'm not like I thought of Kalakaua sending out key people outside of the kingdom to study abroad to get the right. Ike. Likewise, Professor Kanosai having to get the credibility to be you know, listened to in the whole world. So, mahalo. He's, yeah, mahalo for that. We, he's awesome, Keanu. I, I asked him about, uh, you know, about, you know, when we went to permanent from on indigenous issues. He said, oh, no, it's a whole different realm. He explained it to me. But, yeah, he, he's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. You go to the schools and talk to the kids about, because I noticed what you're saying, that's really good. I um, want to talk about what, you know, the solve yeah, you know, I, I, I've never, I've gone to schools to, uh, to share in my capacity as a kumuhula, but not in my capacity as an you know, archaeologist and all. Because I, I used to work at Wainai Intermediate, and they're always looking for speakers, but they're <coughs> able to talk to the kids there. Mm. At like their added classes, they bring in, they actually bring up speakers from the area, and it would be good because these kids are like 7th, 8th grade, oh, so right. they're right at the... Yeah. Time when before they go to high school to start thinking about yeah. and if you you know yeah. that's a good you're a good I think you're a good person to do that. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> oh, right on, right on. Thank, thank you, Webster Dictionary. I was like, Google it. Okay. Mahalo, Mahalo once again. Yeah.